All right, welcome back to Random American. And today we're gonna to find out if you really do need to spend $450 on an ax for it to uh, cut any better. So let's get into it. All right, so the biggest thing we're doing today is I have the Craftsman that I just restored and I have my farm ax, which is what I normally swing. That I paid $450, $500 for, I don't know, it, it was a bunch of money. That I have almost nothing in at all, so I'm going to find out if more expensive means more better, and it probably doesn't, and I just like to spend a bunch of money on an axe. Uh, behind me, I have some Japanese shumac. They're not worth a damn. Can't even make paper out of them, can't make firewood. They don't burn hardly at all. The only way you can do, get it to burn is if you do illegal things. We're not getting into that. So, I'm gonna start out with just felling both of these. I'm gonna do some bucking on them, delimbing. Just see which one cuts better, which one feels better, and let's uh, get to cutting. Preference this and get, getting my excuses out of the way. This is a much longer handle than I'm used to. This is a factory Sears handle that came with this. This is just a four pound head. I'll get into some interesting stuff about this later. But uh, yeah, so whenever I suck and I overstrike, it's because of the handle, it's not because of me. Remember that. Very spongy wood. Oh, fancy. Didn't work. Yeah. I'm gonna call that done. <sighs> okay, so I'll just keep heavy breathing. But the interesting thing about this, you can see that it's worked up and it didn't come with a factory wood wedge. So what I did, I got another metal wedge, drove it in there. That one was in their factory. And I figured I'd try it to see what happens. But this thing was beat a little bit here on top. So I don't know the history on this or whatnot. The handle is a Sears handle and it has a knot there and a knot there, which is not technically preferable, but we'll see. <clears throat> so. I'm going to have to go home tonight and fix that up. I might try and go ahead and get this thing on the ground anyways because I'm pretty well there just for the comparison. And then whatever extra work I need, I'll just use my farm axe. So I'll continue, but I'm going to turn the camera off and get the cameraman out of the way. I don't feel like having an uh, axe head stuck in anybody and have to run anybody to the hospital. So be back in a second. Clearly, Liam Hoffman's better. I didn't even start it. But now I'm going to go ahead and get this one on the ground and get the limbs off of that one because it's slightly in the road. And we'll see. I actually like the way that Craftsman cut a lot. I just, you know, 
had too much faith in what all was going on there. But we'll get it fixed. Intermission. Through the magic of editing, I'm now only fat and sweaty, not fat, sweaty, and breathing heavy. But remember, it's through the magic of my cooking that you became fat. You ain't kidding. If I can place the next one good enough, it'll be the one that makes it fall. Oh. Tried real hard. Oh, that was me. Ah. Come on. Need the craftsman? No. I'm trying to leave enough hinge wood on this side. Pull it away from the log splitter. It's not your log splitter. I know. Good enough. Perfect. Oh, not bad. You can see what I was talking about hinging it further. Brought this all the way down to where it just barely came together and it's wider over here so it'll force it to pull this way well i lied a little bit i'm going to do some light lemming with this i don't think it's going to fly off there but probably will and just for comparison's sake then i'll i'll fix it later but this is just going to be how handy it is to limb with how well it just slices through limbs and you know the general run of the mill stuff Keep in mind, these are quite dead, so grading on a curve. Jiddly. Huh. Huh. That one almost did it itself. good enough it didn't have that many limbs to start with overall I like it a lot a longer handle makes it where I don't have to lean down as far to 
cut limbs off. So for lemming, actually give it an A. For felling, I don't like it so much because it's too long of a handle. So I have to dock it for that. But lemming, man, this thing's pretty great. Back to the Farmax. Well, apparently this one decided it wanted to, de to delimb itself. Um, almost every limb just exploded off of it as soon as it hit the ground, which was kind of funny. So I got this big limb, a couple small ones down there, and I can cut a few limbs off that one that's been on the ground for a year. Nah, that's not, not true. A Schumacher doesn't last that long on the ground. Anyway, see how this do. This is closer to bucking than lemming. Now. That one. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and that's all it has. Yes, dear. Ooh. It's gonna whack you in the head. Yep. That will not be the only time you say that tonight, I'm sure. Well, that is the Farmax Lemming. It does about how I expected. I like it a lot. <clears throat> the handle obviously ain't as long as the Craftsman, but it does cut pretty good. So, can't complain there. Some limbs. It doesn't uh, one chop through like most of them, but I wasn't going full force on any of it. I don't know. It's about average as far as uh, lemon goes. Can't complain, but, you know, nothing crazy special. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of bucking. Obviously, I've bucked with this a lot. I've done two cordwood challenges with it. I'll do a little bit with that while the head is still on it and that'll probably be make or break for these two so let's go ahead and get into that and i can wear myself out even more so the final part of this before we get to fixing this thing is just a little bit of bucking i just just going to do this one since this head is wanting to exit quite quickly uh, a couple things i do want to go over i am not standing and bucking with this for obvious reasons if you can't figure it out read a dictionary i don't know so i'm gonna have to do all of my bucking with this off the tree that kind of limits me a little bit for say the cordwood challenge but we'll see swing nice though cuts deep more worried about the head coming off than anything. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if you didn't sharpen them so damn sharp. They have to be sharp. I mean, it bucks really nice. I'm gonna stop right there. Don't have to cut all the way through. And this has worked quite a way up. It cuts really, really nice. It just does. But I can't get over the 36 inch handle. It's a little much for me. 
If I was like 6'4", perfect. But I am a healthy average 5'9 without boots on. So for me, this is a little bit much. For the cordwood challenge, I might actually change the handle up and just keep this one really nice and oil it up some more. It's slightly crooked, so I can fix that. I can steam it and straighten it. <clears throat> but it's just not what I'm used to. So I can't say that it's bad. The head cut's really, really nice. It has an awesome profile to it. It'll cut deep. The cheeks being smooth on it uh, reduces a lot of friction on it, but it just needs a little bit more TLC. The biggest reason why I stuck with that there wedge design, it looked original, and I thought, well, maybe they knew something I didn't, but now I know why the top of this is all beat to hell is because somebody was going through and beating it on stuff like that that was metal to knock it back down. So, here after a while, we'll get back to the house, we'll get those wedges out, get this handle off, and do some more inspecting. And for right now, I'm going to move on to the Farmax. Then I'll give my full thoughts review and all that, and what I think you could possibly do. Alrighty. Next up, the good old Farmax. You've seen it buck before, but we're going to do it again. Wonder if I could balance on this without making that split. Oh, she bouncy. Okay. Did the handle get you in the nads? No. Okay. It has before though. It looked like it was close. It is. Every time. There we go. <clears throat> okay. There's the Farmax. Like you saw last year. Maybe earlier this year. I don't know. <clears throat> as far as bucking goes, that's probably where this thing shines the most. Uh, <laughs> it bucks really well. It's really heavy. It'll definitely make a man out of you. So beware of that if you go and pick one up. But no, works good. I'd like the handle to be maybe two inches shorter. So whenever I'm up here bucking, it doesn't, you know, you know, again, very moderately average man here. I'm not anything special. A little too much for me, as far as handle goes. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and I'm going to grab some water, grab the axes, I'm going to sit down on the other tree, and I'll give you my final thoughts on all of it. All right, well, I caught some hydration and my breath. Let's uh, go over these, starting with the Craftsman. First things first, this thing's super damn cool. Being a old ax with an original handle, I can post in here of what all this says. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to read. From what I can see, we have Sears, three and a half to four pound, I got, I have some numbers, and then SBX. Not sure what any of that means. Other than, you know, Sears, three and a half to four pounds, that's obvious. This particular axe is a four pound head, where it's stamped right there for. So, it's a little bit much. Of course, 
some of you guys with the tassie patterns with the six pound axes are gonna laugh at me but you guys only have 28 inch handles normally i know that for a fact <clears throat> but four pounds on the end of a 36 inch stick is quite a lot of axe to swing and it does really really well the profile on it is just absolutely beautiful just like that boy's axe is oh i got it in some dirt that's dumb but it was a little bit beat <clears throat> like i said the top of the eye was beat from somebody hammering it to get the handle the seat back in i do not know why there was just keeper wedges or a keeper wedge in here i put a second one in there just for shiggles obviously that strategy didn't work so i'm gonna go to the house we'll pop the two steel wedges out of it we'll deburr this pretty good with the chainsaw file down inside re-wedge it well I'm not gonna re-wedge it because i'm gonna change this handle i don't know exactly where i'm gonna get a handle from i do like the shape of this it's a curved handle but it's still more straight than most and i that's how i prefer them it's a little bit tall it doesn't quite reach my hand all the way around and to me tall handles just feel sharp kind of like the uh, uh, Stanley handle which this resembles that Stanley handle quite a lot overall a uh, super nice axe if it had or when it has the correct size handle I think it'll be a perfect axe for me but we'll see we'll see because this is the axe that I'm going to try and do the cordwood challenge with this year you've seen me swing this enough that's the, it's this thing's turn so i like it a lot then to the old liam hoffman i already had this in a couple of videos already uh one of them a review chipped it a little that's great i haven't actually sharpened this since last cordwood challenge and it's still pretty damn sharp comparing this to this the head is a lot heavier. It's a half pound heavier on, as far as leverage goes, a, a shorter handle, but it shouldn't be so much that it'd be that big of a difference other than reach. This will make you work for your lunch money, I promise you. Probably wouldn't hurt to have the cheeks on this uh, ground smooth, so whenever you're cutting, it cuts a little bit deeper, but, you know, it, it does a pretty good job. <sighs> $450 versus basically free 99 I'm not going to say that this is better than the Liam Hoffman, but you definitely don't have to have an expensive axe to get some work done. I do prefer this. The handle's still a bit too curvy for me and slightly too long. So I can't bring myself to change it. But anyway... Really nice axe, kind of knew what to expect from it. My final conclusion is you don't have to have a super expensive axe to get work done, but boy, it is nice. So there's my answer, non-answer for you guys. If you want to spend a whole bunch of money on a axe, then go ahead. I'll be the last one to judge you. If you say, no, that's stupid, you're wrong, but I get it. So let's go and if you want to stick around and watch me fix this, we'll do a little bit of a bonus, or at least investigate it. We'll do a little bonus montage here at the end. But other than that, really appreciate you guys, and I will see you next time. All right, so as I said, this is just some bonus content. If you guys haven't stuck around this long, it's okay. Uh, if you have stuck around this long, Hot damn, you are the MVPs. First things first, I'm gonna oh, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get a dead blow. We're gonna knock this up as far as we can so I can it's gonna be fun. So I can get these here wedges out. It'll be pretty standard procedure. Dead blow is gonna be extra important because I did something fun with the pommel. I dished it in, which is gonna make this process much harder. Sorry. Let's get into it.
Mm, I knew that was going to happen. Because that's fucking sharp. There we go. I'll tell you what, for 32 cent, 38 cents, 36 cents, that thing works pretty good. Okay. Now that I'm bleeding all over myself. What I'm gathering is it is possible that this was just a replacement handle bought way the hell back for this thing and somebody just didn't know they were doing and then I made it worse. But this is a very good handle. I will oil it some more and we'll set it up somewhere dry. The inside of this does not appear to have any sort of figure eight shape at all. It just looks to be straight. We have all the buttered up stuff in here and I'm going to clean it up. The way that I'm going to clean this thing up you can do it a lot of different ways. You can get a bunch of different files out. You can get a burr bit out that I set oh, right here. Put this on a drill or a die grinder and you can get in there and you can clean these up quick. I'm just gonna use a chainsaw file. Nothing crazy fancy here. go on ahead and bring you in here and show you exactly what I'm doing, what it looked like before, what it looks like now, and that's pretty much the fix for this. I'm probably going to clean it up just a little bit more, maybe some WD-40. Linseed oil this up, clearly I don't need to sharpen anymore. It does a good enough job, and yeah, that'll be the end of it. As you can see, this is all flat. Right here you can see where I've ground away. And where it's not and then on this side it's a definite lip right here and it mushrooms in here and it mushrooms in out to about there so I'm just gonna take this file I'm gonna grind this completely flat back in there as far as I can and then actually taper it down just just a tad just just a little just a little bit we're gonna taper it in and give it something a little bit more to hold on to. And just a little bit more to hold on to. We're giving it just a tiny bit of taper. Oh, focus. There we go. Kind of. But we'll do that all the way around. You can't forget about the back sides or the front up here. That's where the chainsaw file really comes in handy is that front. The back, definitely also. The sides, you can get away with a half round file like this you can get away with that on the sides but it definitely helps have a chainsaw file on the front and back and then down here never got beat at all I might smooth it up just a tad but other than that nothing at all and that's gonna do it so have a good one guys mm -hmm.